Welcome back to The Express at Lake City Studios in Burnaby. As we mentioned earlier, they've shot all kinds of music videos here. They also play host as a venue to all kinds of parties. We've got a kind of cool party idea for you up next. How about a barbecue in the winter? Seriously, beef stew, bacon, mac and cheese, skillet, cornbread. It's a how-to courtesy of Surrey's barbecue champion, Brian Misko. Brian Misko is an internationally recognized barbecue champion with his own line of barbecue products and lots of great ideas for country western themed cooking. Country western cuisine would be, uh, to me, would be a bonfire or a fire in the middle of the field and a pot or something that's like a cast iron pot hanging off of that with just a you know, tremendous amount of flavor, lots of patience, lots of love and lots going on. Short of a bonfire, Brian suggests the backyard barbecue and smoker to get those appealing outdoorsy flavors into foods like macaroni and cheese, cornbread, and beef stew. Your grill or your smoker has that fantastic charcoal burning natural flavor which is really appealing. So that's where you get that extra character to whatever your dish. If you've got something mastered on your skillet and in your oven, bring it outside and just see how it changes and see what flavor you get there. And we'll mix those up. Brian's skillet cornbread starts in the kitchen and ends on the barbecue. Put it in your skillet, put it on your grill, give it some great flavor from the smoky environment, and you've got that beautiful cast iron um, skillet to give it an extra character. And we'll heat that up and then we'll sear off our meat and add it all together for our stew. For the beef stew, the meat was grilled and smoked, then added to the rest of the stew, which was cooked entirely outdoors. Stews are fantastic because you've got a couple of layers that are going on there. One is you've got a stew, and the characteristic of that is something that's going to need some patience and time, and just that brings all of the flavor together in that stew, makes the meat tender and lots of gravy and just lots going on that way. But the ele added element on there is putting it on your grill and adding that smoky charcoal flavor to searing the meat and letting it cook in your grill. Two different layers in there. Fantastic thing to do. Let's mix those in there and we'll stir it up and melt them, melt them. And finally, the classic comfort food macaroni and cheese gets a new heartiness when cooked on the barbecue and finished on the smoker. I think this is the best mac and cheese ever. <laughs> All together, a fantastic country western feast. In Surrey, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. You can find all three of those recipes online at houseofq.com slash shaw. So, it's the winter barbecue party. You've got the menu set. Now, how about some entertainment? Up next, meet Langley's Peggy Thompson, who's been a professional line dancing instructor for over 30 years. They say you're never too old to try something new. 80 years old, I started about a year ago. Well over 80, not quite 90. I have some people who are 96 years old. Stan Smith is part of this line dancing group at Brookswood Senior Center. I'm used to regular dancing, but I wanted to learn something different. <laughs> and for a beginner, he's really getting the hang of it. Uh, you got to concentrate. That's what I have trouble with, keeping my brain going on my feet. <laughs> learning from Peggy Thompson, a veteran instructor who's been teaching line dancing for over 30 years. It started in, in the 80s when line dancing just was starting to go crazy. The achy breaky was coming out then and the boot scoot and boogie. Thompson says line dancing is good for the brain and the body. Your heart's going pretty good like some of the faster dances, you're working up a pretty good sweat. It's really relaxing, you can yee-haw and, sh you know, shout. Sometimes if I'm not really crazy about the dance, I do a lot of yelling. <laughs> For women like Lillian, who's a widow, line dancing is a welcome departure from traditional Paris dancing. When you lose a your partner, you can dance by yourself, you know. Line dancing may be ideal for solo dancers, but this group admits they've got a lot of women. We need men, lots of men. Come on down, yeah. <laughs>
kind of lonesome here. This may be considered a seniors group, but dancing is keeping them young at heart. You know, it makes people happy. It does. The music is great. And when they come into class, I teach them something, and they leave, and they're all happy. I always say, if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Langley for The Express. To sign up for one of Peggy's classes around the Lower Mainland, you can go to the website brookswood.ca. You're watching The Express, and this is what's coming up. Photon coming from the sun, hitting the solar sail, you're out in space. Let's, let's see what happens. You ready? Solar sailing at the Space Center. Nice and slow to start off with. Yeah, Red Mill tips for running without the rain. No traffic, no people, no dogs. The Express, we are your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV. Provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. Loungehairstudio.com Dear Children, the Bush Foundation of Canada. Thank you for sending me Rory the Lion. That means I'm going to get my wish and that makes me really, really happy. Yesterday he was sad, but I told him it's okay, Rory, but we'll make two more needles until my wish. I will send you pictures from the top of the Rocky Mountains. Love, Emily. Imagine the difference a wish can make. Click on childrenswish.ca and give today. The West Coast, Lotus Land, Hollywood North. Home to a hundred languages and as many faces and voices. In communities atop mountains and in cities on the sea. Friends and neighbors, parents and children, dog walkers, social talkers, and vintage rockers. It's where we all come together. Your neighborhood, your community, your local voice. Shaw TV. Welcome back to The Express at Lake City Studios in Burnaby. They shoot music videos here. They rent out the venue for all kinds of parties. And next door at their sister studio, they have over 35,000 square feet of showrooms filled with film and movie props. We're going to explore that on Friday's show, because right now we're taking a solar sail at BC's one and only Space Center. Well, hello and welcome to the H.R. McMillan Space Center for the Express. I'm Cam Cronin. I'm Reminder Samra. And today we are going to talk about sailing. Yes, uh, many of you probably here in uh, uh, BC have experienced sailing before. It's a nice thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. well, we're going to talk about something called solar sailing. Yep. Now, what do you need to, to sail a boat here on Earth? You need wind. Wind. And you need a, you need a sail. And a sail. Yeah. And normally you're in the water. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, if we go into space, I know there's no water up there, right? Yeah. Right. And, uh, but is there, is there wind? There's solar wind. Yeah. But there's also uh, just a lot of light from the sun. Okay. So this is light sailing would be a yes. better idea, a, a way to describe this. Mm -hmm. So it actually uses light from the sun to, to push something? Yep. So, so you need a very light sail for this. Okay. All right. So like aluminum foil. NASA uh, in space right now has something called the uh, the nano sail d which is uh basically a test solar sail that they have had up in space and it actually works really really well um the uh um, the future of solar sailing is actually quite bright because mm -hmm. i guess it's using a renewable source renewable source it's very lightweight and um, what can, about the speeds you can accelerate at very high speeds so you can imagine going to pluto in just several months to, or just over a year or two. Wow, okay. Now, before we get into uh, exactly how the solar sail works, I would like to demonstrate something uh, about the solar sail. And um, to do that, I'm going to hurl objects at Reminder. Over here, we have a model of a, a solar sail. Basically, the idea is you'd have a, a large reflective surface uh, up in space. Um, I mean, the closest thing that you could think of on Earth would be would be like aluminum foil. What you're looking for is something to reflect the sunlight. Mm -hmm. So what happens when sunlight hits something that's really shiny? It, it reflects back, but the thing is, although light has 
fairly low energy, it does exert a little bit of a force. So if I was out in the sunshine and the sunshine's hitting me, it's actually, it is hitting me with some force? Very little, but it is hitting you. It's not gonna push me over? No. No. Um, so why does it work so well out in space? Well, there's not, there's not much friction to push things uh, to slow you down. Okay. Additionally, a solar sail is very large and very light. I'm gonna throw this at the solar sail and see if I can actually propel uh, Reminder. I'm the sun, photon coming from the sun, hitting the solar sail, you're out in space. Let's let's see what happens. You ready? Yep. Okay. Are you are you moving? Oh yeah. Yeah. On Earth, you put fuel in a rocket. It burns that that fuel up, and it gets out into space. Well, with the solar sail, because the sun keeps hitting it, it really can keep accelerating for its entire journey. You don't yep. really have to worry about refueling it because it keeps using this fuel, a very uh, um, uh, Earth-friendly uh, product, and space-friendly as well. We're not sending some weird uh, uh, radioactive material out into space. It's, it's literally using the power of the sun. And in fact, in a lot of ways, this goes back to uh, the way that explorers explored Earth in the first hand, right? Christopher exactly. Columbus, uh, people use the power of, of wind to, con, uh, to, uh, to, to check out our planet, and now we can hopefully use the power of the sun, same sort of technology to check out the rest of our solar system. Cool. Thanks for uh, letting me throw that at you. No problem. <laughs> for The Express, I'm Cam Cronin here at the HR McMillan Space Center. I'm Reminder Samra. And uh, happy space sailing. There's an interesting lecture coming up at the H.R. McMillan Space Center. The topic, Pluto and the Vatican. How do science and religion handle the changes in our understanding of reality? That happens on Saturday, February 25th at 7.30 by donation. So you've got a little philosophical workout for your brain. How about one for your body? If you're sick of training in the rain for the sun run, have a look. We've got some quick tips on tackling the treadmill at the YWCA. Okay, today we're gonna make friends with a treadmill. Friends, like BFF friends or frenemies? Friends. Friends, okay. It's nice and slow to start off with. You get comfortable just with walking in the beginning. So this button controls your speed. This controls your incline, gives you a little bit of a hill, so it's not quite so flat. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Friends so far? We're friends. It's easier to run on a treadmill, basically because the belt helps you with momentum and it's a flat surface. There's always an emergency stop here. If I want to stop, I just go like that. Well, that's, you know, that's the pro way to do it, yeah. There's no elements from the outside that you have to deal with. No traffic, no people, no dogs. If I get bored, can I change directions and run backwards? No. I've seen it on TV. No, you're not going to run backwards in your marathon. You're right, but I might conga. I am in a Sunrun training clinic, and you can read all about my musing mishaps and markers online. I'm blogging about it for the Vancouver Sun. And guess what? We're halfway there. That's right. It's hard to believe it's already the third week of February, which reminds me, what do you think of this shirt? There's a special event coming up next week, February 29th. You can learn all about that and more with today's Spotlight. Festival Dubois is renowned as BC's premier celebration of Francophone and Quebecois music, dance, food, heritage, and culture. It's held at Mackin Park in Coquitlam. Wear your pink shirt on Pink Shirt Day and take a stand against bullying. Net proceeds benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Coast BC and CKNW Orphans Fund. The 11th Annual Talking Stick Festival is taking place at venues throughout the city of Vancouver. The festival features a unique mix of Aboriginal performances from dance, comedy, music, slam poetry and plays. And that's it for today's Express from Lake City Studios in Burnaby. Reminder that on this Friday show, we'll be touring their sister studio, Can-Am in Portique. In the meantime, we're going to leave you with a look at the local art scene. Thanks for watching the Express, only on Shaw TV.